last lecture where uh, we discussed in extensive detail about the resolution refutation method. Um, resolution refutation method is also considered to be one of the important decision procedure methods with which one, one will be able to know whether a given well formed formula is tautology or valid or when two or three groups of statements are consistent to each other or satisfiable to each other etc all these things one can come to know. So resolution refutation method is also like uh, uh, semantic tablox method where we looked for a counter example so here what we will do is given some set of clauses uh, which are usually uh, uh, in disjunctions so given these clauses so we will try to prove an empty clause in all so after resolving these clauses and all so one will come up with a, a empty clause then that proof is called as resolution refutation method so that means you have used the resolution method and then uh, you are refuting uh, refuting it in the sense that you have come up with uh, an empty clause that is the contradiction. So in this lecture what we will be doing is we will be uh, studying some more examples based on resolution refutation method and then second uh, in the second part of this lecture we will be talking about the comparative evaluation of uh, various methods that we have learnt so far. So far we have learnt uh, truth table method to start with this is considered to be the most simplest method and then truth table method we have used indirect truth table method so one need not have to uh, construct all the rows and all it is more or less like a constructive method so especially when the number of rows increases and um, number of variables increases and the number of rows increases then truth table method may not be an effective kind of uh, decision procedure method. Uh, maybe partly a computer can uh, compute these things in a better way then especially when the number of row uh, number of propositional variables increases to 4 or 5 more than 5 things will become unmanageable in all for us because for checking the validity you need to check all the rows in which you have true premises and a false conclusion that establishes that a given argument is invalid. So then we talked about uh, semantic tablox method and then we try to solve one single problem uh, with the help of all these methods the one is truth table method the second is semantic tablox method and the third one is reducing it uh, into CNF and DNF and the fourth method is uh, the semantic uh, uh, sorry uh, the resolution method and we also use some kind of syntactic methods so that is the natural deduction method where we used conditional proof and the direct you add absurdum kind of proof. So what I will be doing in the second part of this lecture is, is that I will take up one example then I will I will try to solve that problem using all these methods and then when the time arises I will talk about the importance uh, uh, the merits and demerits of these particular kinds of decision procedures that are available to us. To start with in continuation to the last lecture yeah, let us take some uh, examples uh, some more examples so that we can understand this resolution refutation method in a better way basically we it is a decision procedure method with which you can establish whether or not a given formula is uh, uh, satisfiable or unsatisfiable or one can even come to know whether or not a given well form formula is valid or in the same way when you are talking about an argument you will come to know whether argument is valid or invalid. So let us consider uh, one simple example where we are trying to find out uh, the inconsistent clauses inconsistent clauses in the sense that all these uh, uh, clauses that is uh, p1 p2 p3 uh, in the first example and the second uh, clause is p1 and not p3 and the third clause is not p1 and not p2 whether all these clauses after applying the resolution principle whether it lead to uh, uh, an empty clause or not is the one which we try to look for if you come across an empty clause that is considered to be these clauses are considered to be inconsistent otherwise it is considered to be consistent so now we have these clauses p1 p2 p3 usually this is expressed in this particular kind of format p3 and the second clause is p1 or p3 not p3 usually we write it in this way it is a set which consists of all these clauses and all and the third one is uh, not P1 and not P2. 
so basically what we are trying to do is is that so these are the clauses c1 c2 and c3 so now what we'll be doing is we'll apply, we'll be applying the principle of resolution to it and we'll find out uh, the resolvent of these clauses and all ultimately uh, if we can deduce this empty clause this contradiction then it is uh, considered to be inconsistent all these clauses are considered to be inconsistent so now uh, apply uh, the resolution principle for uh, the first uh, two things like uh, uh, this and this because you have a literal p3 and you have a literal not p3 applying resolution on a literal p3 taking into consideration the other things as formulas p1 p2 and p1 etc the what you will get is this one p1 p2 uh, and this will go away not p3 will go away then you have another p1 so now uh, after applying the resolution principle you have to ensure that there is no redundancy and all for example in this case p1 appears twice in all so this is as good as same as p1 and p2 so now what we got is p1 and p2 so now once again you apply the resolution uh, on these two things mm -hmm. for example uh, apply resolution on these two p1 p2 and this one so now you will write it uh, right down here now you have not p1 and not p2 so that is the third clause in all so now applying simultaneously for example so applying resolution principle on p1 that leads to uh, p2 comma uh, not p2 so now now once again applying this particular kind of thing resolution principle on these two clauses c1 and so now what we have here you have c1 c2 c3 and this is c4 for example and then c5 uh, now uh, this is uh, this is as it is c3 only this is c5 so now once again applying a resolution on this one you will get uh, these two on resolution uh, you will get p1 uh, p2 will go away uh, because you have p2 and you have not p2 so that will go away and then so what is left is p3 so now here uh, in this case so once you have uh, this particular kind of uh, thing so now you have p1 here and you have p2 here and you have not p1 and not p2 so now applying resolution on uh, both p1 and p2 simultaneously then you will get this particular kind of clause since you have a literal here and you have a, a negation of this literal here and in the same way not p2 here and p2 here so applying simultaneously uh, the resolution principle on both the literals p1 and p2 you will left with only an empty clause so that means that given these three clauses are said to be inconsistent to each other because when uh, it got resolved by using uh, resolution principle it led to some kind of empty clause that is a contradiction so empty clause is always false that means uh, there is no interpretation which makes this particular kind of formula true that means the formula is considered to be unsatisfiable so now let us assume that another example where we are trying to check for the validity of a given argument so in the second example that you are seeing there in the slide so let us try to solve this particular kind of problem by using resolution refutation method so these are the clauses that we have a implies b the first one uh, second one is uh, 
नॉट ये आर सी आर टी नॉट ये आर सी आर डी एंड द थर्ड वन इज नॉट सी आर नॉट सी आर डी एंड ये नॉट सी आर डी एंड ये एंड सी एंड नॉट डी सी एंड नॉट डी इम्प्लाइज नॉट ई सो दीज आर द क्लॉजेस सी वन सी टू सी थ्री सी फोर एक्सेट्रा एक्चुअली दीज आर नॉट इन द एक्चुअल कंजेंटिव नॉर्मल फॉर्म एंड ऑल यू शुड नोट दैट रिजोल्यूशन रेफ्यूटेशन मेथड अप्लाइज ओनली टू दो फॉर्मूलाज विच आर इन द कंजेंटिव नॉर्मल फॉर्म सपोज इफ द फॉर्मूला इज नॉट इन द कंजेंटिव नॉर्मल फॉर्म देन वी शुड इंश्योर दैट वी कन्वर्ट इट इन टू द अप्रोप्रेट कंजेंटिव नॉर्मल फॉर्म so each and every formula that occurs in the proposition logic will have its own corresponding conjunctive normal form so converting a, any given formula into conjunctive normal form may not be that difficult so now this leads to a conclusion which is not d implies b so now in the resolution refutation method what you will do here is is that Uh, given these clauses c1 c2 c3 and c4 and then in addition to that you take the negation of this particular kind of formula so now let us write uh, the convert it into appropriate form and all so the first clause can be written in this way because a implies b is nothing but not a or b now the second clause uh, can be written as say as it is it is already in the disjunctive form so we need not have to do much so now the third clause is not c or d so now we need to apply uh, distributive law then it will become not c or d and not c or e so this is the third clause so now the fourth one uh, can be written in this way so now this whole thing is taken as x and this as y so now this is not of c and not d or not e so these are the clauses that we have c1 c2 c3 and c4 uh, first we write it in this particular kind of format and the third one is is that so now what we are trying to do is is that we have listed out all the premises and all and now we take the negation of the conclusion so now negation of the conclusion is not d implies b so first of all not d implies b is uh, same as uh, not not d or b so now if you apply negation to this one so this will become uh, not d and not b because not not d is d only negation of d is negation of d and negation of disjunction will become conjunction and the negation of b so this is the one which we have so now this can be written as the same as this one so now this is the final clause and all not of d or b so now uh, this particular kind of formula we further convert it into an appropriate form then uh, it will become same thing will become not c or not not d is d or not e so this formula is same as this one so so now what is that we are trying to do is is that we now we need to apply resolution principle on these clauses and then in addition to that if you take the negation of that one ultimately you need to generate this particular kind of thing the contradiction that is a empty clause if you can generate empty clause then that means uh, your result uh, with re using resolution refutation process you have showed that uh, all these things x1 x2 c1 c2 c3 etc and the negation of this particular kind of formula is unsatisfiable so now what you need to do here is this thing. so now you start applying 
the resolution refutation method on this particular kind of thing. So, so there are two ways to prove this particular kind of thing either you resolve this uh, uh, consequence uh, sorry uh, uh, the terms C2, C3 etc and all ultimately you will generate this particular kind of formula or you take the negation of the conclusion and show that it leads to contradiction. So now so these two for example uh, uh, this will not go to anything you not know, because you are not here. here. Now uh, taking into consideration any one of uh, these things um, so not C or D and not C or A so that means both the things are there so you need not have to write anything in all so you, need, you can skip this particular kind of thing because all these are premises only all the premises will be in the form of conjunction only C1, C2, C3 and ultimately it leads to some conclusion X. So now so where we can apply this particular kind of thing uh, so you have A here and you have not A here so now what you will do is not A or B uh, and not C or E so now you have listed out C1 and C4 for example so now these two resolution you will get B resolution applying on this particular kind of literal A leads to B or B or not C these two you will get this one uh, these two. So now you apply resolution on these two things not C or D and B or not sorry uh, not this one. So where else we have literal and its negation is the one which you need to take into consideration. So now B R, so now this will become B R not C. Now here you have C here and you have not C here. So now you write it like this: not A R C R D. So now these two uh, applying resolution principle. It's applying on C then the C will vanish so now what you have is B R not A uh, R D because C van, uh, vanish, vanishes here because you have not C here and C here so applying resolution principle on the literal C you will generate this thing B R not A uh, and D uh, so one can apply resolution principle uh, many times and all ultimately in the process you should be in a position to generate whenever you come across an empty clause you need to stop the proof procedure and then that is that will serve as uh, uh, a proof for this particular kind of thing denial of the conclusion leads to contradiction so now uh, so now observe these uh, two things uh, so here we have not D and and you have not B and all so that is what we have so not of D or B means not D not B so now applying the for the first thing uh, for the not D you will get you are applying resolution principle on D you will get B R not A so this is what you get now once again applying a resolution principle on not B which is there here already then this B and not B goes away and then you will get not E. So now we need to see whether uh, we will generate A from some other things like uh, uh, so now you have not C or A and then you have not A so this leads to particular kind of thing so B R not C uh, not A or C or D so now we need to apply on this thing so not A or C or D 
not C or D and then um, somehow we need to take these clauses in such a way that you generate this empty clause. So now uh, instead of uh, taking this into consideration now you take this B or not C and not B so these two you will generate not C so this is what you have generated from not B uh, B or not C so now apply this particular kind of thing now not A and not C or A these two in under resolution you will get not C okay uh, not C uh, not C or A uh, one second this is not serving our purpose so somehow we need to get this particular kind of C or A B or not A not B we will get not A so how to get this one is the thing which we are trying to look for not A or B not A or C or D so not C or D uh, not C or A etc uh, somehow we did not uh, still generate this particular kind of contradiction in all mm. you take into consideration uh, is uh, uh, not not D or B not D and not B and not of uh, D or B. Uh, not C or A so this and uh, uh, for example in this case uh, not C or D and then not D this will you will generate not C uh, and uh, this one not C and not A or C or D you will get uh, these two on resolution you will get uh, this particular kind of thing uh, applying resolution on C you will get not A or D so ultimately what is happening here is is that uh, we have applied result resolution uh, n number of times and all somehow uh, we are not able to generate contradiction C and not D or E not of C and D or not E so if we can generate a contradiction out of these four clauses and all then your your proved not D implies B negation of not D implies B leads to unsatisfiability and hence you are said to have shown that true premises and a false conclusion that is an invalid kind of argument and all. So somehow this needs to be worked out in greater detail I will come back to this problem in a while from now. So what we will be doing is we will take up one simple problem and then we try to see how this problem can be solved in three different ways you know that is using the different decision procedure methods that we have learnt here. So let us consider some one more example and with which we will come to know how to solve this particular kind of problem by using uh, various kinds of method so the one which is explained on the board in the first problem so ultimately what one needs to solve here is this that so you apply resolution on uh, in, num in num n number of steps and all 
and then resolve those things and ultimately so that has to be contradictory with this particular kind of thing. So then you are said to have achieved uh, your particular kind of task and all. So here what we have done simply is, is that we started applying a resolution principle on different kinds of conjuncts and all ultimately we generated some kind of formulas so somehow we are not able to get to our conclusion that is the empty clause suppose if you do not get this particular kind of empty clause after applying the resolution exhaustively applied this resolution on all these steps and all then the argument is considered to be invalid okay so now let us consider another example so we will see how we can apply this resolution principle in solving this particular kind of problem not a or b yeah this is what is creating problem here so i made a mistake here so that is the reason why i am looking for the solution here actually this is not of a implies b so now this will become a r not not a means a a r b so now as you can clearly see here so now we need to apply again and all so this problem changes now so if if it is simply a implies b and not a r c r d then there is no way in which you can generate a contradiction here that means the argument is going to be invalid now that means not d implies b does not follow from this one. So the actual problem which I could have taken for proving the validity of this given argument is in this sense so this negation is missing here if you take the negation sign here then by applying resolution principle then maybe one can come up with a kind of repetition. So let us try to see this try to solve the same kind of problem by taking into consideration this negation sign and then we try to solve the same problem with the help of other methods as well. So actual problem is this one negation of not, not A implies B and not A or C and then not C or E and F not C or E and F. Uh, this problem is uh, different and all so forget about uh, this thing so now let us come back to uh, a different kind of problem uh, this this problem we will try to solve it uh, by using uh, different kind of methods and all. so let us consider a simple example uh, so this problem uh, is the one which we have already seen so this is uh, like this here is a puzzle in which there was a robbery in which lots of goods were stolen and the robbers left in a truck and it is known that nobody else could have been involved other than ABC that means it is simply represented as A or B or C and C never commits a crime without A's participation that means C implies A and B does not know how to drive that means A, B requires the company of A and C so this is represented as B implies B and A. Uh, or P and C so now we need to find out whether A is innocent or guilty now this problem we try to solve it uh, by using uh, various uh, kinds of uh, methods first we will start with uh, the simple resolution refutation method so in that method what we will be doing is we will be listing out all the um, all the conjuncts and all and we will start applying the resolution refutation method on this particular kind of thing so then uh, if we can generate uh, an empty clause from these things then that means uh, we are said to have achieved our particular kind of thing so so what is that uh, we are trying to do here in this example is like this so here are uh, these conjuncts and all a r b r c so now what I will be doing here is, is that I will be trying to solve this problem by using uh, one of the some of the methods that we have already discussed so far. So the first uh, C1 clause is like this 
and second clause is C and A sorry C R A and the third one is B implies B and A or B and C. So now this is already in the disjunctive form this is also in a uh, is consists of disjunctions and now we need to convert this thing into appropriately into corresponding disjunctive form. So now this whole thing is taken as x and this as y so now this will become not b r uh, the whole thing b and a or b and c. So now you need to apply uh, associative law here so now this will become not b r b and a that is the first one and the second one is uh, not b r uh, this is r not b r b and c so now these are the things which we have and then we can further expand it uh, in this way using distributive law here so now this will become not b r b and not b r a so this is the first one if you apply distributive law this is the thing now r now the other one so that is not b r b and then uh, r not b uh, so this is not b r b and and not b r c so this is the one which we have so so what are the clauses now for us so these are the clauses that we have so the first one is a r b r c and not c r a and the whole thing so now in this case not b r b is obviously is going to be true only so you need not have to worry much about it it's, it is written as top always true and all so now whatever is left here is these things not b r a or again here uh, not b r b is always true and all so we need not have to worry much about it so and then not b r c Uh, so that means not B R A and then the other clause is not B R C. So now uh, one can do it in uh, various ways and all applying resolution principle on this one whether you will get A as an outcome or not that is a problem or that is a question that we are trying to answer here. So each resolvent is considered to be a logical consequence of the above two clauses so now uh, so these are the clauses that we have c1 c2 and c3 so now the conclusion here for us is, is that now we are trying to find out whether or not a is guilty so assuming that a is guilty suppose if you take into consideration that not a whether that is uh, inconsistent with this thing or not is the one which we are trying to see so now uh, a r b r c and this one so now we need to apply the resolution principle on this one so now uh, these two uh, applying resolution on literal c you will get not uh, b uh, a r not b so because not c will go away so what is left is a r not b so you have to add add these two things it will become a r not b so now uh, applying resolution on these two things uh, you will get applying resolution on uh, the literal b you will get uh, a a r c r a so now in order to avoid redundancy here so you will simply write a occurs twice here so you will just simply write a r c so 
so now uh, this is what has come as an outcome of these uh, resolutions you know. so now you apply uh, resolution on these things not C or E A applying resolution on the clauses A R C and the clause that are that is there here not C or A so now the C and not C will vanish then you will get A R A so now this A R A in order to avoid redundancy and all we simply write A so what is that we got we listed out all this uh, the information that is there here so there is a first clause A R B R C and not C R A and then the third clause uh, is this one so we simplified this thing into this particular kind of format by using distribution and associative law and here is what we got so we got it because of this particular kind of thing not B or B is always true so you not have to worry much about it so so what is left here is not B or A and not B or C that is what we have written here this is the two clauses and applying resolution on C2 and C4 that means this is a logical consequence of these two clauses C2 and C4 we got A or not B and again applying C1 and let us say this is C5 and all resolution on C1 and C5 we got A or not A or C and we already have this particular kind of thing not C or A so that is what is already there and now again once again you apply resolution principle on this particular kind of thing concerned with the literal C whenever you have a literal C and its negation is there it cancels annihilates then what is left here is A or A so A or A in order to avoid redundancy we got A N so A is the one which we got it as an outcome of all these propositions and all that means A is in the original interpretation A means A is guilty if it is not A if you somehow you generated not A uh, as uh, as a result of applying the resolution here then not A means A is innocent so now uh, the same particular kind of uh, thing which can be this can be solved by using the semantic tablux method as well uh, uh, we can show that uh, whether or not A is guilty or not so now in the semantic tablux method what you need to do is this thing so these are the three propositions uh, that we have so now we are trying to say that uh, A is assuming that A is guilty uh, so now we are assuming that suppose let us say A is the conclusion from this one and there are two ways to solve this particular kind of problem using the semantic tablux method semantic tablux method always look for, we look for the counter example that means if you assume that A is guilty in the beginning then what you need to do is you have to consider not A and then you construct a semantic tablox tree and then you need to generate uh, a contradiction in all. so now you list out all the premises uh, not C R A and B implies B and A or uh, B and C so I am comparatively evaluating checking this this particular kind of problem with various methods so that you will come to know the merits of these methods so so now right now I am trying to solve the same problem by using semantic tablux method so now you list out all the premises and all so now the problem tells us that these are satisfiable and all that means all these statements are consistent to each other at least under some interpretation this formula is going to be true x1 x2 x3 so now you expand uh, use treed uh, rules and all to expand this particular kind of thing so now so you apply uh, this one x implies y then it will become not x and y so this will become not b and this is same b and a are B and C so now so this is over now this can be further simplified into this thing uh, sorry 
so either it is B and A or it should be B and C now this we checked it and all so now we need to look into this particular kind of thing so now wherever the open branch is there you need to write this particular kind of information so since this is a branch it will be like this not C or A and here also you write the same information and every branch which is open you need to write this particular piece of information so now each time you finish with checking with this formula you need to see whether a literal and its negation exist in a in a branch so this is considered to be one branch this is considered to be one branch like this so now in this case uh, we do not have we do not still have a literal and its negation all the branches are open so now apply uh, uh, rule for this particular kind of thing a r b r c so then this particular kind of information needs to be written on every branch and all like this thing a B and C so this information A or B or C we have written it under whatever branch which is open so now so this is A or B or C A B or C A B and C like this A B and C so now we need to inspect all these branches and all uh, wherever a literal and its negation occurs the branch closes and all so now this branch go, goes like this a not c not b so that branch is open so now you have b here and not b here this branch closes here and c and not c this closes here itself and now this branch is open now you have b here and not b here this branch closes and this is also open so now you have a not c and a b and there is no C here that means this branch is also open and this is also considered to be open but here, here you have C and not C this closes it's a big branch and all so sometimes uh, some uh, resolution repetition method might be better than the semantic tab blocks method uh, because the number of branches are more here so in the resolution repetition method uh, we, we have seen in the, uh, in the last slide that uh, this, that will simplify our task you know. so now here this is also open this is also open and all the open branches suggest us that uh, that makes this formula true and all that means if you observe this particular kind of open branch this says that under the interpretation in which A is true C is false sorry this branch closes uh, here itself so you need not have to worry about it because you have B C here and then not see here this closes here itself so you need not have to worry much about whatever follows so now in this case all the branches are open so now open branches tells us the answer and all so that satisfies this particular kind of formula so now any open branch which you take, in, take into consideration the first one is like this A C and not B so that is the first thing and the other open branch you will find it here A not B and we do not know whether uh, about C in this particular kind of branch so this is the first one second one and third one and the third one is uh, A not C and B this is also another kind of solution and then the other one is A B so this is the one which we have and other things are uh, a b again the same thing which you need not have to write again another thing which satisfies this formula is a c and b a b and c and the other branches are like this a b c and b c we do not know about uh, a here so now the last one is uh, this thing a b c which is already we have listed so all these things are considered to be the interpretations which are going to satisfy this particular kind of formula that means when A is true C is false B is false that makes these three sentences true and in the same way when A is true B is false that also satisfies this particular kind of formula so now in all these cases you will observe that you have turned out it turned out to be the case that 
uh, we got only A and all. So that means that usually A is considered to be guilty. So our interpretation is, is that when I write simply A that means A is guilty when I write simply uh, not A that means A is considered to be innocent. So now uh, the same kind of thing uh, can be solved by using uh, uh, truth table method in the but in the truth table method uh, the problem is is that you have uh, three variables that means uh, the number of entries would be uh, eight eight rows will be will occur in the truth table so now in the truth table what you need to look for is a row in which uh, all these statements are considered to be true that means conjunction of uh, c1 c2 c3 whenever that is true and all so that row corresponds to our particular kind of answer so the same thing which you might get it in so a particular kind of uh, uh, example it can be done in n number of ways and all so uh, so there in the natural deduction what you will do here is is that uh, from a r b r c and not c r a and all these things so what uh, essentially you do here is is that you list out all the premises and all so now we need to assume something and all here suppose if you start with uh, a is guilty and all so that is the original conclusion uh, so you need to assume something or other uh, then you take the negation of uh, this thing into consideration and then see whether that leads to contradiction or not so for example in this case uh, uh, you list out all these uh, things and all a r b r c c r a uh, etc and all uh, so what essentially one needs to do is by taking all these uh, premises and all ultimately you should be able in a position to deduce a in that case a follows from these things uh, with using resolution repetition method we showed that a will come as a logical consequence by applying some resolution principle so in the natural deduction method what you will be doing is you will be using the principles of logic like modus ponens modus tollens etc and all and then you will generate something like a and all from these things so let us see whether we can deduce a from this particular kind of premises so so now uh, four uh, so you have a r b r not c and you have not c r e so from these two things you will get uh, of course C R B R C and not C R C. So from this you will get A R B R A R B R A. So in order to avoid redundancy, you will write it only once and all. So this will be A R B simply A R B. So this rule is which we have discussed earlier. Uh, this rule is called as cut rule so that says that alpha or gamma not alpha or beta suppose if you have a formula like this then so this will become gamma or beta this is called as cut rule which is also the rule responsible for the resolution principle the same rule which we apply here then you will get a or b so 1 and 2 this is a kind of a modus ponens rule it is a special kind of rule which you can use any rule which preserves the truth that you can use it here. So now so now this means something is A or B is true means definitely some one of these things should be true and all so assuming that B is true here irrespective of whether A is false or A is true so let us assume that B is true and all so now these two 3 and 5 mode exponents you will get B and A are B or C 
So how did we get this one? Three and five mod exponents. You get this. Uh, so now uh, somehow we we have to deduce uh, a as an outcome of this particular kind of. Uh, uh, so now from this, since this is true and all. B and A and B are C is uh, already true, so that means even B and A is also true because of this particular kind of thing. X and X R Y is going to be true when both X and Y are true, or even in the case in which uh, one of the disjunct is false, also then that also it leads to this thing. So now, since uh, B and A is the case. So now from this uh, you can uh, eliminate this uh, conjunction conjunction elimination rule which we use and then from this you will get this one conjunction elimination rule you will get A that means we have deduced A from these three premises you know, using uh, a kind of proof method which is called as natural deduction method. So now you have to note that in this particular kind of method each step is considered to be the assumptions are obviously considered to be true and then if that has to be true this also has to be true each step is considered to be true and hence the final last step of your proof which is considered to be a theorem so that also turned out to be true. So this is another way of showing that in this particular kind of problem A is said to be guilty in all in this particular kind of way. So there is another way of doing this particular kind of thing within the natural deduction method. So now what you do here is this particular kind of thing. So now assuming that uh, let us assume that A is guilty in all. So now for the sake of argument you take into consideration not A. That means you are assuming that A is not guilty. So now we are trying to uh, come up with some kind of contradiction so now so on the fourth step since not C R A and you have A here so this option is ruled out what you get is not C so now in the second principle so how did you get this one not not A is denial of conclusion. So now you got from 2, 2 and 4 you got this not C. So now since not A and not C are true we have not A and not C is also going to be true. So now seventh step once again not A and not C. So now these two So from this particular kind of thing, not C or A is already true. That means A is also considered to be true and all. From this particular kind of thing, we can take into consideration an assumption that A is also true. So now you have you have come across a situation where your not A is true and A is also true. So that means this leads to a contradiction. And all. That means. The negation of this particular kind of formula A assuming that A is considered to be not guilty leads to this particular kind of contradiction. So in this lecture what we have done is simply this that we started with some examples of resolution refutation method in that method what we essentially show is if we want to show that a given argument is valid then what you need to do is given these clauses there are the premises you add the conclusion to it the denial of the conclusion and then you will be deriving an empty clause if you can derive empty clause from that one that means uh, denial of uh, this particular kind of formula uh, denial of the conclusion is unsatisfiable that means the original conclusion holds. So that is one way of showing that uh, given argument is valid uh, in case using resolution refutation method. So then in the second part what we have seen is we have, we have taken up one simple problem 
that exists in the propositional logic and then we showed with various methods the methods that we have with which we have shown are the semantic tablox method and we also shown the same thing by using a syntactic method that is a natural deduction method with which we showed that um, in fact A is considered to be guilty uh, that is what we have deduced from a given set of premises and all that is a natural deduction method the same kind of thing which we did not show in this uh, class is, is that we can show the same thing with the help of truth table method that means you list out all the premises and then you assume that not A and then you will come across a row in the truth table in which you have true premises and a false conclusion so in that case you can show that this argument is invalid that means not A leads to contradiction that means A has to be true so in this sense one can solve the same problem by using any one of these decision procedure methods it is all up to our convenience which method to employ so in some cases natural deduction method might be simpler or in other case semantic tablox method may be better or in some simple cases to begin with truth table method fares better than other methods or in some other cases resolution refutation method especially when you have uh, conjunctive normal forms then you can straight away apply the resolution principle and simply get your answer because each resolvent is considered to be a logical consequence of uh, the conjunctions that you are taking into consideration that conjunction is nothing but um, each conjunction will have its own corresponding disjunctions so that is what is in a conjunctive normal form so in the next class what we will be doing is, is that we will be taking up the axiomatic propositional calculus in that what you will be doing here is, is that we will be, we'll be taking into consideration the primitive axioms and then we will be using as many uh, little uh, as many minimal kind of uh, principles and all like mo only modus ponens is the one which we use and we use transformation rules and then we will reduce all the valid formulas within your logical system so in the next class we will be taking up uh, the axiomatic propositional calculus there we will study two axiomatic systems one is due to uh, Russell and Whitehead that is in the Principia Mathematica and the second one is due to Hilbert and Ackerman Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system.